special welcome to you. Why aren't you in the book? If you will oh, uh, pass that little book oh, down the so aisle, you have to put your name it. and a uh, phone number and email something. address. Okay. Uh, that will allow us to get in touch with you and share what's going on in the life of our church. You go on the cameras. Okay. Alan has a couple of announcements. I'm in the live church. Okay, good morning, everyone. First, again, I want to say thank you to everyone that participated in Fall Festival. As of right now, the total for Fall Festival is over $10,000. Amazing for our congregation here. Now, thank you. Thank you. Now, then, the second thing I want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who prayed that we wouldn't get rain, but we did. <laughs> so, but we brought it inside. It was a great occasion. I want to thank everyone who donated money, who donated candy, who donated time, who was here to help that evening. Because if you weren't here that evening, you missed a special event. It was something else. We had a person doing clickering at the very end of the night. We had 1,092 people come through here during Trunk or Trunk this year. Yes, thank you so much. And the good thing is that we did not run out of candy. We had three bags left. <laughs> that was a blessing. So now the big event, which everybody's waiting for, is who won the trophies. Our third place winners was David and Wendy Clay. I don't think they're here today. They were uh, they had a Halloween costume with bats and cats and all that. The second place winners this year is the Shaw family. Oh, the next line to this. Does someone want to come in here to talk to me? Go get it. Well, we didn't get third place
The grace of Jesus Christ be with all the saints here and in the celestial home.
give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with all of my whole heart. God, have mercy upon us, for we do not obey Lead me in the path of your rights or your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities and give me life in your ways. God have mercy upon us because we are selfish and are not people. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sin and by your grace.
ago, I talked to y'all about one of the best friendships in the Bible. Does anybody remember who they were? David and Jonathan. Well, did you know that much earlier in the Bible, there was another wonderful friendship? And now we get a turn for the girls, right? So in the Bible, there's only two books named after women. So the first one would be Ruth, and the second would be Esther. And the book of Ruth is much earlier in the Old Testament than Esther. And I love that story because I had a relationship with a wonderful lady just like Naomi. So I'm only going to tell a small part of the story. And if you want to know the rest of it, I challenge you to read the book of Ruth because it's very well done. And she was such a remarkable woman. She didn't even come from the country where God's people, the chosen people, the Israelites, the Jews lived. She came from a different country that was an enemy of the country of Israel. She was from the country of Moab. She was a young lady. She had um, met Naomi, and Naomi moved. She moved to Moab because they didn't have any food in their country. So Naomi moved from Israel to Moab, and they met, and they bonded, that really strong bond. But there were a lot of differences between them. Ruth was young, Naomi was older, old enough to be her mother. They were from different countries, enemy countries. They spoke, maybe they spoke the same language. Ruth at that time didn't know God, but Naomi did. And at that time, they didn't have a Bible. They had to tell everything about their God from their memory that was passed down. Naomi shared the God Jesus with Ruth. And Ruth became a very faithful, loyal believer in the same God we believe in today. And when Naomi decided she needed to go back to her home because she felt like she was getting older, and then that country, Moab, didn't have any more food, Ruth said, I'm going to go with you. And Naomi said, no, you're not. And Ruth said, yes, I am. And Naomi says, no, you're not. And then they both started crying because they had such a BFF. as friends forever, yes. So I want to read you what Ruth said to Naomi, okay? But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. I will go wherever you go and live wherever you live. With my people, I will go with you, and your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. I will die where you die, and will be friends until that day. May the Lord punish you severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. So that's a lot like what Jonathan and David said uh, when we talked about that a few weeks ago. So those two ladies, and again, that's at the very beginning of Ruth, so there's a whole lot more to that story. But I wanted to just pull that out and let you understand that you can share the Word of God with others, even though they can be different from you, and you can then become better friends with them. And so our God is the God of the world. God's chosen people were the ones to send the world the message. And that's what Naomi did for Ruth. And Ruth became a very devoted, loyal follower of our God. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you 
for someone like Ruth, someone like Ruth. and Naomi, Naomi. To, give us examples to give us examples to live by. In your son's name, in your son's name. amen.
21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Then the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end.
friendships are wonderful. And Jesus, as he spent time with his disciples, teaching them about the kingdom of God, one day he said to them, you are no longer my disciples, but you are friends. Elevating the relationship that Jesus has with humanity, elevating the relationship that Jesus has with us. It is a personal relationship. God knows me by name. He knows all about me. And not only does he know he is concerned. He cares about me. Bethany, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived, was a suburb of Jerusalem. And so Jesus would retire to his friend's house for rest. And they loved him too. They anticipated his coming. One cannot forget that it was Mary who received him and who would kneel at his feet to listen, to share, to relate to friend Jesus. And Martha, we remember, is busy trying to extend hospitality. In that particular story, we don't know about Lazarus. But Lazarus was a good, close friend of Jesus, as the story in this passage demonstrates. Jesus was told that his friend Lazarus was sick and dying. And yet Jesus continued the ministry of proclamation of the kingdom of God and also of teaching his disciples what it meant to be the disciple that Lazarus in the meantime dies. And after two days, Jesus begins his journey to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary. The Gospel of John is a Gospel that has signs to demonstrate who Jesus is to us, who Jesus is to the Father, and how Jesus cares for us in a very intimate and loving way. One thing we can be certain of, Jesus loves us. And Jesus loved Lazarus. John also has a tendency of demonstrating God's purpose, God's plan for us. And if you read the Gospel of John, God's plan for us is that we may have life and that this life that is a gift of God and to us may be lived abundantly. Fulfilled. That is the message at the core of the Gospel of John. And if Jesus came to us to demonstrate this love, then we who are recipients of God's attention through Christ Jesus are then asked to respond. And the question is, how do we respond? to such affection, to such love of God for us. John, if you remember, is also the one that says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that anyone that believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Where have you laid Him? is the question that Jesus asked Mary. And so they take him to the tomb. In my recent travel to Jerusalem, I witnessed many a tomb. Those that were sepulchers, holes in the ground, and those that were in caves, almost as though a 
chambers. When Jewish people at the time of Jesus buried the dead in a tomb, and I want to take away the word buried, they were placed in a tomb. You could almost say that it wasn't just for one person. It was a family dwelling where other family members that would die would also be placed there. There were small tombs in caves, and then there were large tombs, almost as though depending on your social status, if you were affluent, you would have a large chamber, and if you were poor, you would have a small chamber. If you walk into one of these tombs, most of them have a place for three people, almost like in a U. A bench on the left, a bench on the right, and a bench in front of you, connected as in a U. What did Mary say, Lord? You're left. He has been there for four days. And there's a stench. You don't want to go there. But Jesus responds to her, What have I said to you that if you were to believe, you would see the glory of God? For nothing is impossible to God. You could almost say that the rising of Lazarus it's a forerunner to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. But what is moving about this passage and this narration? What is moving is that as they came to the tomb, Jesus stopped. Others were weeping feeling their loss, and Jesus also wept. I've included this illustration at other times. When you go to Oklahoma City after the bombing back in the 90s of the federal building, there are churches close to the site of where the federal building stood. The Methodist put a small open air chapel <coughs> with benches and literature so that as you come to Oklahoma City to look at the memorial, you can spend time sitting and reflecting on life, on death on the way that people are killed, sometimes unjustly, and the way that we too face our mortality. We're here but for a brief time. <coughs> <coughs> the Roman Catholic Church built a monument of Jesus looking at the site where the bombing occurred. And the inscription there says, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus came, incarnate of God, to show us once again, youth and children, that we are loved by the loving, caring, and Jesus also came to demonstrate to us that he shared our humanity and he shared our emotions. The emotions of loss. When someone dies in our family that is beloved of us, we feel a sense of loss. Life isn't the same without my partner. Life isn't the same without my 
child. Life isn't the same without the special person that I love and care for. Love, life isn't the same. And yet God, through this story, reminds us that when we face death, we should face it with hope and the expectation that a God of Israel is a God of life, a God who is with us when we mourn and when we have a loss. God weeps for us as we weep for those who are no longer with us in body. So he comes to the tomb. And perhaps if you were to rate in scale the miracles of Jesus, this would be at the very top. This would be at the very top because in this situation, Jesus takes a person who has been dead for four days and, up, and at the call of his voice, Lazarus, come out. The stone is removed and then a figure appears still bandaged. Lazarus lives. The message for us today of this All Saints Sunday is that we will remember members of our church and those that are related to them by calling out their names, by lighting the candle, by tolling the bell. And as the bell tolls, it should bring this. He or she lives. They live. They live the presence of God. And that is the promise and the expectation that we people of faith share with that family from Bethany who had lost Lazarus. He lives. He lives. It's not Resurrection Sunday, but the theme and the wording that is ours is the wording of Resurrection Sunday. We live, we live, we will always live when our faith rests and depends on the promises of God. There's life. There's life. That's why when we gather for worship, our disposition to our world is to promote anything and everything that enhances life. Life. Caring relationships nurture life. Loving relationships enhance life. Doing for those who are in need enhances life. Responding to human tragedy, whether it's natural or man-made, is promoting life. For Jesus, in the previous passage, says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. No one comes to God in this faith but through me. Our faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So today, we remember, we give thanks, and we celebrate the God of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we come to a solemn moment in the life and in the worship of our church when we will remember those who go before us. A word of destruction. When the families are with us today, as your loved one is called, please stand where you're at. As you stand
then Dennis will come and bring the rose. The light symbolizes presence, remembrance. The bell signifies an announcement that there's life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The response of the congregation after a call of name is in your bulletins. We thank you, Lord, for this your servant, that I will do it by stretching my hands this way, asking you to respond. On this day, we remember the life of our lead colony. Yeah. 
night of earnest repentance of sin and seek to live in peace with one another. For on the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, broke the bread, offered it to us, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, offered it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant. Poured out for you and for many in the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Send forth, O oh God, your Holy Spirit. Upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We will pray the Lord's Prayer both in English and in Spanish. Together we say, Our Father, Lord,
that it would respond with thanksgiving in this prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. Most gracious and loving God, your Son became flesh and dwelt among us so that humanity could see, hear, and sense your presence among us. We know that we're to love. For Jesus Christ has set the example on the cross at Calvary. He died and shed his blood so that our sins might be forgiven. And he rose victorious as an exclamation point of verification that we can trust in God. On this day, remember the loving and sweet <coughs> of an incarnate. Remember the vivaciousness and the excitement of being with Bobby Morris. The tranquility and serenity of knowing James Spencer. The beauty and the charm of Mildred Rankin. The perseverance and the resiliency of Jen Fisher, the loving son who worked hard, kept.
and in Holly. Remember Michael Candelas, his sweet demeanor, his loving presence, and his joyful eating. Remember Glenn Clifton, his stalwart presence, a man of values. And remember Bruce Peters, the loving brother, the loving family. Dear God, may they continue in your presence and may their lives and yes, their deaths point us toward a more glorious future for us. A future that is eternal, a future that is not deceptive, a future that is sure through Jesus Christ. We pray for our nation. Keep us united in love. Help us to feel the solidarity of being an American. Help us to cherish the values that make <coughs> the United States a great nation. And help us, dear God, to continue to be compassionate the world. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. So I wanted to share with you guys my journey with Christ. Um, my name is Abby Bennis. A lot of you know me as April, or one of the young girls on fire. Um, I was not born into the church. When I was younger, we didn't go to church at all. My father was an alcoholic. My mother did the best she could to keep me and my siblings away from that scene. She didn't want us to get comfortable with that idea. It wasn't until my father decided to finally listen to God's call and follow him to church. So they decided, we're going to raise our children right, and we're going to take them to church. Then we started getting very, very involved. They started a praise band. My older brother decided he wanted to learn the guitar. My mother decided she wanted to sing in the band. And my father decided he's going to play the drums. I was too young at the moment to be involved in the band, so I had to sing from the pews in the congregation, which I didn't mind. I realized that music was calling me. That's the way that the Lord was calling me was through music. I would sing with them. I knew every single word, but I didn't understand the words, the, the meanings behind the words that I was singing. And it wasn't until this really strange thing happened to me. And I remember it was during service, we were singing a song, and all of a sudden I felt this warmth. And it started from my head all the way to my toes. And I didn't know what was going on. And it was so strong that it brought me to my knees, and I just bawled. And I didn't understand what was going on. And it wasn't until after I asked my parents, I was like, what is going on? It's really weird. It's never happened to me before. I always sing the songs. I know the words. Something weird is happening. And it wasn't until they told me that the Holy Spirit had touched me that night. And I didn't understand, or I didn't want to understand at that moment, what was going on. So, growing up, we moved from church to church to church. And that's just, you know, what happens. That's how life is. And you kind of lose touch as you're going older. So, I went to college, and I decided, I can do this by myself. I don't need my parents at all. I don't need to go to church. I can do it by myself. I tried really hard my freshman year to keep going to church, to keep my faith strong, but as the classes got harder and the workload got stronger and stronger, I got weaker. I decided, I'm just gonna push my faith aside. If I need him, he's there. And it wasn't until about my senior year, when I would come back during the weekends, that someone in the praise band decided, hey, do you like to sing? You can come sing with us. I was like, okay, that's fine. I know the songs, I can sing along. And it kept that flame. 
flame inside of me bright. I didn't realize that I needed it. I needed to sing. I needed to be here. I needed to share the love of Christ with a congregation, with myself, with my parents, with my friends in college. So I thank the praise band for starting that, because that eventually led me to singing in the chancel choir. Eventually that led me to becoming worship leader. That led me to helping with the altar guide when I could. And that's my gift. My gift is to sing. But your gift is completely different from mine. Some of us like to cook, so we help with the luncheons. We help with the youth, we feed them dinner. Some of us have patience, and they're kind and generous. So we help with the food pantry, we help with the nursery, and we help with ESO. But that's gifts that God has given us that we need to share with our community. God has given us love to open our hearts and our doors to this church to be a welcoming beacon to the community. And it isn't possible without every single one of you in the congregation and at home. If it wasn't for you guys, for me personally, pushing me and showing me the love that I can share the Holy Spirit through the songs that I'm singing and the lyrics that touch me, that you guys can feel it too. So thank you. Thank you for sharing your gifts of your service, your prayers, your presence, your witness, and most importantly, your offerings. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do as much outreach as we're doing. And a special thank you from me for being able to open your hearts and your doors for our special little small but faithful Hispanic ministry that we come so we can worship in our own native tongue. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your offerings and your gifts. So hopefully we can keep our doors open for another 59 plus years. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, as the children came last week to receive the treats that we offered, let us remember that we are like that, coming to you for the gifts and the strength that you offer. Help us to remember that our gifts to the church are just returning a portion, a small portion, of what you've given us. Be with us and give us strength in giving so that we may share your love throughout the world. In your son's name, amen.
balcony, and let all the saints in glory to worship with us. Hebrews says that we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, and then those are the saints in glory. Our hymn of sending forth is one of the most beautiful hymns we've ever heard. The hymn of promise was written by a person who was connected to Perkins School of Theology, wife of a professor. And she has written other songs, but this is perhaps her best. Let us sing this hymn with expectation and faithfulness to God's promise, the hymn of promise. Be with you now and forevermore. Amen. 